Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well on this Wednesday afternoon. Ariel Hawani with you once again. And of course, we're being joined by the one and only Colby Chaos Covington. Good to be joined by Colby once again. And Colby, uh, it has been two and a half or so months since we last talked. And, and, and if you don't mind, I'd love to break down the fourth wall here for a second. Uh, you know, we didn't talk for a bit. And then all of a sudden, I see all these reports online that You've been removed from the American Top Team website, all this stuff, all this drama in the welterweight division. So I shot you a text uh, yesterday afternoon. Seven or so hours later, I get a reply, and you say that you have some things that you want to get off your chest. So we'll do that today. But first off, let me ask you, how are you doing? First off, I just want to say I'm doing great. It's an honor to be back on the A Show, Ariel. And I just can't thank you enough for being the MMA journalist of the decade and, and always giving me a platform, man. It's a truly an honor to be here with you today. And, and uh, just to be able to speak to your mind is, is uh, it's, it's a dream come true. All right. Well, thank you, Kobe. I appreciate that. So what is going on? Because uh, all of a sudden I'm seeing all these reports that you've been removed from the American Top Team website. Are you no longer affiliated with that team? Uh. That is correct. I'm affiliated with Colby Covington Incorporated as of now. You know, I'm my own team, you know. Dan, I love Dan. Dan Lambert is, is still a great friend to me. He's a mentor. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a second father to me. Dan Lambert gave me an opportunity. I can't thank him enough. You know, he's good people. But it's time to move on, Ariel. Everybody knows all good things come to an end. I fulfilled my debts there. You know, I was there for 10 years. I started my MMA journey there at American Top Team. And, you know, I, we went to the top, you know, Dan Lambert has everything. He's got UFC belts. He's got WEC belts. He's got pride belts. He's got WWE belts. But, you know, I, what I feel accomplished as a fighter going there and being able to do something that he's never done before, I was able to take him to the White House. So I feel like I fulfilled my debts and we had a great run together. But, you know, it's time to move on. You know, it's it's uh, you know, we're evolving, we're growing and and, you know, just like the saying goes, Ariel, the sun sets, the sun, sun rises, the caterpillar turns into the butterfly. Okay. So I guess you're the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. Um, so let me ask you, when did this happen? When did this go down? Uh, you know, you have to ask Dan Lambert about that. I, I can't really recall when it went down, but I can recently? say that, uh, yeah, it was pretty recently. Okay. It was pretty recently, but you know, I, you know, I know you're the journalist of the decade, so I'll let you do your journalist work and, and go to journalism and, and find out the inside scoop. But, you know, I just it, it was the best thing that could ever happen. You know, I, I was sick of all the pro fighters making this millionaire Dan Lambert, like putting him in a tough situation. Like they're they're coming to him, Joanna, Dustin, George, to protect their precious little feelings. Oh, Dan, Kobe's such a mean person. He's a bad guy. Oh, he says mean things about me. Kick him off the team, blah, blah, blah. Hey, guess what? I'm not on the team no more. I'm not your I'm not your teammate. I'm not your roommate, George. Now I'm just your daddy. I give you your spanking. So if you got something to say, you don't go to Dan Lambert and crying like a grown ass adult. You're a grown adult professional fighter, and you're going to another grown adult who's a successful businessman, Dan Lambert, and you're crying about your precious little feelings. Oh, win, win, win. So were you asked to leave, or did you decide to leave on your own? Oh, uh, you know, it was time to leave, man. I just, I, I felt bad putting Dan in that situation, Ariel. It just, I've like for months, literally he's coming to me, dude, man, you put me in a tough situation. You know, everybody wants you out, man. You're making the gym, you know, uneasy. And I didn't want to do that to him, man. I don't, I don't want to make his life, you know, tougher than it already is. He already has enough on his plate. So I felt like it was the best for me to move on, find some other coaches, find some other training partners and go about my business, how I go about my business. You know, the biggest thing, Ariel, is that we're in America. Are we not entitled to our own opinion? Don't we have free speech? Hmm. But didn't is, Dan like institute a rule where he didn't want the teammates talking about each other? Yeah, exactly. So that's that, you know, that's his role and that's their business. But we're in the Colby Covington business, Ariel. I'm hmm. not in the Dan Lambert hmm. business. I'm not in the American top team business. I, I'm a professional cage fighter. I'm in the entertainment show business and I'm in the money making business. I'm not in the feelings business. So, you know, it's just he may implemented that rule, but man, you can't take I'm an American area. You can't take away my rights. That's my constitutional right. I, I have freedom of speech. And if you try and take that away, you know, that's not fair. And and things need to move on and time moves on. And, you know, it's for the best. You know, I'm very happy with things, how things are now and and how things went down. And 
there's no ill will, ill will towards Dan Lambert. I love that guy. He's literally a mentor and a friend. And, you know, we did some things together. We did an impact wrestling angle. We went to the white house, you know, we did things together that no one will ever be able to do with him. And, and I'm proud. I, you know, I'm proud that I was able to, to bring those accomplishments to him. So this is really big news because you've been a fixture there for so long. For context, do you remember when you joined ATT? Yeah, I joined directly when I got out of college. They called me up and they were like, they wanted to bring me out after college wrestling season. And they flew me down, got me a house, you know, put me on, you know, a stipend for food every week. And this was probably in 2000. This was in 2011. So nine years ago. Now, I believe, I mean, certainly you've been there longer than... Uh, Joanna, you've been there longer than Dustin. Jorge, I'm not sure. Do you know if you were there before him? Well, the thing about this is that's the funniest, you know, is, is the thing with George, you know, he started in another gym. He started at FFA, Freestyle Fighting Academy. You know, mm-hmm. Dustin started mm-hmm. in Louisiana. Right. Uh, uh, Joanne started in Poland somewhere, you know. So, you know, I'm thankful that I was able to start my career there and, and I was never at another gym. And the only reason I had to leave is because, you know, it just was causing too much drama in the gym. And that's not what I want to do. I don't want to bring drama to a grown ass successful businessman's life. You know, I want to go about my business. This is my business. So, you know, I think George had been there about two years longer than me. Okay. But he had left. He was at FFA and he, he went from FFA to American Top Team. I guess what I was getting at was, did you ever get to the point where you said, look, I've been here for almost 10 years. Why do I have to leave? No, I, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, it's just a building, you know, it's just a gym. And, you know, I just felt bad for Dan, you know, putting him in that situation and, and it's his gym, you know, it's his decision, you know, and, and that's what life's all about, you know, it's decisions and he made a decision and, and, or, and the people made a decision, you know, he made his decision to implement that rule that, you know, trash talking policy, but I don't think that should be a rule because Ariel, honestly, is this a team business? This is an individual business. We go out there. No, I can't tag anybody in and be like, oh, I tag you in. You're going to come fight for me now. No, it's individual. We fight in there by, by ourselves. So, you know, it's an individual business and I'm getting locked in the cage by myself and I want to do my own business. I don't want telling me someone telling me how I have to do business. Like, that's not fair. And that, that you know, that's just it's not American. Do you regret anything that you said or did over the past couple of years that led to this? Not at all not not one bit you know I have no regrets and and I feel like uh this is the best thing that could ever happen to me you know this is this is my chance to grow and to evolve and become better from it and you know it just gave me more motivation I just you know I'm happy this is like a blessing in disguise for me and and uh you know I never said anything that wasn't was unethically wrong you know I said a lot of the stuff I always say Ariel is within truth there's nothing I don't come out and say blatant lies like some of these guys you know I'm coming with a lot of truth but Sometimes the truth is too hard to handle, Ariel, and we, we know the brutal, honest truth. You know, these snowflakes, they can't take it. When, when things were getting really hot, like several months ago, you're about to fight for the belt, and there's a lot of back and forth between you and Jorge and the other members of the team. And I've asked you this question, but now that you're, you're no longer affiliated, I'm wondering if your response is different. Was it ever uncomfortable there for you? Did you ever feel unsafe? Did you ever feel unwelcome? I can't imagine what it would be like. I know ATT is a pretty big place, but it's still just a place. It's a building, as you said. You're going to see these guys. Was it ever a little weird or uncomfortable for you there? No, it was never weird or uncomfortable for me because, you know, I know I'm the best fighter in the world and and no one can mess with me. So every day that George would come into the gym and he'd start creating uh, drama and a ruckus, you know, and yelling from across the gym, pull me, I'm going to mess you up. I'm like, let's go. Come right now, George. Let, let's go, journeyman. You want to do something? Come do it. Stop stop yelling across the gym, trying to make a scene, having all the coaches pull you back. If you really want to fight, let's fight, man. Let's go outside and fight. Let's go in the octagon and fight. But that's the thing about George and Dustin and Joanne. They don't want to fight. You know, I mean, Joanne's a girl, so obviously I'm not going to fight her. But but George and Dustin, that's a whole other story. They want to they want to cry to Dan. They want to talk about, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, they want to talk all in the gym, but they don't want to fight, man. They they, they can't, they don't want to fight me. They know deep down inside Ariel what happened when we trained for the last 10 years. And let me just tell you, it was like fighting an amateur against a professional. I mean, let's be honest, George, he can't read, he can't spell, he can't write. I mean, let's be, we honestly know he definitely can't fight. So, you know, I want to know what's up with George. Like, why is he holding out? Why is he not fighting newsmen? You know, what, is he waiting for me? Is he waiting for America's champ, for the people's champ? 
for Miami's favorite fighter, for Donald Trump's favorite fighter, Colby Chaos Covington? Is that what's going on, Ariel? Okay, well, we'll get to that in a second, but I just want to ask you one more thing about the situation. Um, not that long ago, you posted on your Instagram a picture of you and Dustin. It seemed like you guys made amends. So what was that all about? Uh, that was just me, you know, just respecting, you know, the rules that were in place at the time, you know, but, you know, gloves are off now, you know, Dustin Doofus, Poirier, you know, he, he want to, he want to direct his complaints because that's all they do is they complain and they're, they're ultimate feelings champions. They're not ultimate fighting champions, they're ultimate feelings champions. And they're going to Dan, they're complaining. Well, guess what? The head of the complaint department is not Dan Lambert anymore. The head of the complaint department is Colby Covington. And let me let me talk. Direct your complaints to Colby Covington. I don't give a click. So are you still living in Florida? Will you still call Florida home? And, and, and will that be where you train as well? Yeah, Florida is still my home. Uh, you know, I still reside in the 305. I'm still the king of the 305. I run Miami. These streets are mine. George <laughs> knows that. So, you know, Miami is my home. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not moving my life just because someone made a decision, you know, and, and I made a decision. It's, it's a new opportunity. And, and there's great fighters and great coaches down here, great training partners. And, you know, I, I have a great business. The Colby Covington Incorporated, you know, we can fly out multiple training partners and coaches and I'm going to get the best looks around. And you're going to see a growth in me. You're going to see something you've never seen from me before, Ariel, in my next fight. And, and the world's going to be shocked. I, I can't wait to get out there in the octagon under those bright lights again. So where do you train now? Where's your gym? Oh, Ariel, you know we can't talk about that, buddy. <laughs> Why not? I got coaches. I got coaches. Okay. Why is that I a secret? Coaches. I mean, I feel like you're actually being very uh, revealing right now. Why is that the one that you can't reveal? Because that, that'll come out in time. We're not, we're not okay. talking. We didn't come here today to talk about that. I come <laughs> to talk about how much I respect Dan Lambert. You know, how much... You know, I, I, you know how, how much I'm thankful for our time together. You know, we went to the White House, me, him, and Uncle Dana. Good times. You know, I'll never forget that. But there's still one thing left that I promised uh, Dan Lambert, and that's to bring him Marty Fake Newsman's head. You know, he promised me he'd be at the next fight with Marty Fake Newsman front row, and I would deliver him his head. So, you know, I got to do that for Dan Lambert because obviously Dan knows deep down inside Jorge's not going to do it for him because Jorge sucks. And A, he's either not going to fight him, Jorge, or B, he's going to get his ass beat and he's going to get ripped limb to limb. So Dan, deep down side, knows his only chance at beating Mark, Marty Fake Newsman and getting his head is through me. So we're still friends. That's my boy. So, okay. So I understand you won't tell me where the gym is. Could you tell me who your, your coaching staff is? I can't reveal that to you yet. You know, that'll come out in time, Ariel. We got to be patient, man. Good. All right. Good things take time. And just like good things came to an end, good things take time to develop. And, you know, things are being put in place. And I'm putting a lot of hard work in behind the scenes. And anybody that doesn't believe that I'm in the best chance to win right now, they're going to be surprised in my next fight. So would it be fair to say that you're not joining another team based in Florida? You're kind of doing this sort of like a boxer per se, where it's just team Colby Covington and you're going to have your own staff at your own place. And that's pretty much it. Like you're the the focus of all the attention. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Ariel. You know, this is uh, Colby Covington Incorporated now. You know, I don't, I'm not affiliated with any gym. You know, I'm affiliated with the Colby Covington business and we're in the ultimate, we're in the ultimate money-making business. We're in the, the ultimate fighting championship, but there's no feelings here. You know, there's no complaints here at Colby Covington Inc. You can say whatever you want, freedom of speech, freedom of opinion, do whatever you want, but don't get your feelings hurt when you're a precious little cage fighter. And so you, you, you've moved on at this point, even if they asked you to come back, if they said, let's make amends, you're done with ATT. Yeah, I'm, I'm done with ATT. You know, we had a, we had a great run while it lasts, but you know, it was time to move on, you know, and the sun sets, the sun rises, uh, you know, it's a new chapter. This is a, you know, Ariel, it's been a great story we've had together and, and you know, it's, it, there's always a new chapter that comes and, it's time to turn the page, you know, and this new page is the best one yet. And, and we're just getting started. You haven't seen the best Colby Chaos Covington yet. And I'm just excited to, to show everybody the real me and, and not be able to hold anything back, not the uncensored, unfiltered me. I get to show the real me. I get to dial it back up again, Ariel. No one's <laughs> telling me what to do. So you, you felt like you were being held back because of this rule that was instituted. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it definitely was hindering on me a little bit. It, uh, 
it, you know, it didn't allow me to be me, you know, and what's got me to the dance and what's got me here. And that's by just not caring what people think, not caring about people's feelings, you know, just, just going about my business because at the end of the day, this is my business. I'm the only one that's getting locked in the cage. You're not coming in the cage with me. You know, you're not getting paid. You're not, you're not the one that has to negotiate with the UFC and, and, and you're set, you got your money, you're set for life. You can do whatever you want for the rest of your life. So, you know, I just, I just feel like, yeah, it held me back. And, and now I have the best opportunity to be me and showcase who I really am. And I promise you, I got some really juicy stuff coming area. And one last thing on all of this. Um, I know that you and Dan were in business together as far as him representing you contracts, fights, et cetera. But recently you teamed up with Balanji group, but he was sort of still a consultant for you. If that's the best way to put it, is he still going to be involved? in your business or is this like a clean break? Your friends, clearly there's still respect there, but are you no longer affiliated with him in any kind of business way? Yeah, that, that's correct. You know, it's, okay. it, this is the next phase in the plan, you know, Lambert's still part of the plan, but you know, as far as agency, you know, I, I relieved him of those duties mm-hmm. because you know, I didn't, he, he's got enough on his plate, man. And, and I told him that when I went to Balanji from the start, I was like, damn, man, I don't want you to have to get in the middle of all my drama. And I'm not right. talking about just the drama with the fighters. I'm talking about with the UFC because he has to go to the negotiating table and, and argue with Dana White, argue with, you know, the other guy behind the scenes that does the negotiating. And I don't want to keep putting him in that predicament where it's like, dude, he's, he's ruined his friendship with the UFC. He's ruined his friendship and relationship with these other fighters and coaches and this and that because everybody hates me and everybody wants to talk smack about me. So, you know, I just feel like this was the best plan and step to – you know, take the drama out of his life and show him how much I respect him. He knows how much I respect him. I never went to him crying about other things other people did in the gym or other things people said. No, I I was always respectful of him and his time. And I want him to enjoy the rest of his life, you know, and not have to worry about little high school drama, man. I mean, we're, we're professional grown adults, man. Act like adults. Don't go crying to another adult when you're an adult. Okay, so now let's transition to what's next for you because it's interesting. Before I even texted you yesterday, um, I was I was talking our mutual friend Chael P. Sonnen. We were taping Ariel and the Bad Guy. We we're talking about the the mess at the top of the welterweight division, all this drama as of late. And he brings up, "Hey, what's going on with Colby Covington? Why don't we hear his name being brought up? Where is he in all of this? How is he not factoring into any of this stuff?" And I somewhat hypothesized that perhaps. He's in timeout. I don't know what's going on with Colby Covington. And so I'm really happy that we're talking right now because I would love to know what's going on with you. In the midst of all this drama, and of course, we've got Woodley coming back against Burns this Saturday, and we've got everything going on between Masvidal and Usman, as you alluded to, Conor McGregor in that mix as well. Where are you in all of this? Why isn't your name being brought up? Oh, Ariel, you know why my name's not being brought up because I'm the toughest fight out there. No one wants to fight me. I mean, Marty Fake Newsman knows if he fights me with a competent ref that doesn't give him free timeouts in the fight, he has no chance to win. I did concuss Usman, wobbled him multiple times in that fight, but we just found out that Usman still has a couple brain cells left in that thick little skull of his because he's looking for easier fights with two little lightweight soy boys and George Masvidal and Conman McGregor. So, you know, these guys are smart, man. They don't want to say my name because they know what comes what happens when they say my name, they're going to be in for the fight of their life. And, and, you know, uh, George Masvidal, you know, he's out here begging for a rematch with Nate Diaz, the soy boy. I mean, that's pathetic, dude. Like, why are you you're making yourself look so stupid to the fans? The fans are realizing you're fake, you're phony, and you're afraid to fight. You're, you're afraid to fight the champion. What's up, dude? I be, I called this from day one too. Eric. I said, George is not going to fight. It was many scared to fight and he sucks at fighting, you know, I, he can win his next – George Masvidal can win his next 20 fights. He still wouldn't have as good a winning percentage as me. That's how bad he is. So he's a bum, and he's irrelevant. He hit lightning in a bottle, and, you know, he's sad that he doesn't want to try and capitalize on it. He just – you know, but anybody out there, they – you know, I'm, I'm looking to fight soon, Ariel. You know, I've been begging to come back and save the sports world, save America, but, you know, we just got to see what the UFC wants to do. I, I want Marty Fake Newsman, but the last thing Marty Fake Newsman wants is to get locked in a cage with me again especially if it's going to be a fair playing field because he knows he can't beat me unless he cheats. So, okay, just curious, why aren't you fighting Woodley this Saturday? Because it seemed like there was a lot of momentum a couple months ago. That's when we were talking um, about that fight finally happening, a fight that's been brewing for a long time, a lot of heat between you guys. Why not 
uh, book that fight? Why didn't it happen for May 30th? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, Ariel. Uh, UFC didn't want him to have that fight. Uh, the UFC pretty much knows he's irrelevant and he's washed up and he hasn't fought in what, a year and a half, two years. So they think he's just old. He's washed up. So they gave him a guy named Leon Scott or a kid named Dilbert. I mean, who knows what Dilbert is? So the UFC wants to see if he still has anything left in the tank because his last fight, he didn't even win one second of one round. He got completely dominated from pillar to post from start to finish. So they want to see if there's anything still left in the tank, if he's going to earn this fight. I was begging for the fight. I was willing to fight Tyron Woodley on five days notice because it's the easiest style matchup in the whole entire division for me. The guy has no heart, no cardio, and he's a soft little soy boy. So, you know, if he maybe if he gets through the test this weekend, I would love to fight him and, and retire him the way he should go out. But, you know, let, let's be honest. He's going to stick to hurting people's ears for a living with that whack-ass rap album he's trying to come out with. You think he wins on Saturday? If you if you can remove your your personal issue with him, do you think he beats Gilbert, or do you think Gilbert beats him? Uh, I don't know what a what a Dilbert is, Ariel, but uh, you know I would hope he could beat a guy named Dilbert. You know the guy the guy fought it. At, I don't even know what he fought at. No one knows because no one knows who he is. So you know I would hope he wins, but dude, in his last I mean, when's the last time he won a round in the UFC, Ariel? Has it been like two, three years, four years? Tyron Woodley. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, prior to the the Usman fight. His uh, was it against who was it? Now I'm I'm uh, was it? Oh, D- Darren Wonder the Doughboy Till. Darren Till, yeah, finished Darren Till. Wonder Boy, yeah, stop Darren Till. Yeah, Darren the Doughboy Till, man. That's a that's a that's a great win for him, man. Someone who everybody's beaten and and remember after that he, he I thought he had a flawless performance and then all of a sudden sudden they want to make him versus me and all of a sudden he's hurt. Oh, I can't fight. I got a hurt pinky. The dude's full of fake news. Everybody knows Tyron Woodley's the CNN and the UFC aerial. He's not like you. He's not like a real reporter and a real guy who comes with facts and, and, and real news. So how do you foresee this playing out for you? Because it seems like now Usman Masvidal, it's, I don't know, on ice. Um, it doesn't seem like there's much heat behind Usman McGregor. Maybe I'm wrong on that front, but uh, it seems like a long shot. Where do you factor into all this like if you could look at your crystal ball when do we see colby covington fight next and against who uh you know if, if we can look into the crystal ball it, you know it's either got to be this the heated rivalry you know ex-best friends turn uh bitter enemies you know journeyman jorge masvidal versus colby chaos covington you know let's let's fill the dock in american airlines arena let's let's go find out who's the king of the 305 he can't claims to be from miami but Everybody knows I'm Miami, Miami's favorite fighter now. So, you know, that, I think that's the perfect uh, headliner and, and it'd be a great thing. But, you know, if that can't happen, you know, I want my rematch. You know, I deserve my rematch, Ariel. That, that was so foul play during that last fight with Mark Nasso Goddard. Thank God he's locked up in the UK and he can't get over there because the travel ban. That guy's a piece of shit, man. He's, he's over there anti-Brexit. He bring, believes in the European Union. So, you know, he hates Trump. He hates the fact that I support Trump. So, of course, he's going to cheat in the fight. Of course, he's going to call fake falls against me. But then when the fouls are actually happening to me, he's not going to call them. So, you know, I want a ref that's not going to that going to be biased and, and is going to ref the fight objectively. And it's going to be a completely different outcome, Ariel. I promise you that. I guarantee it. Mark my words. You heard it here today on Ariel Hawani's show. Next time I fight Marty Fake Newsman, He's going to sleep, and I will have the real welterweight championship because he's got the fake Power Ranger belt. Do you think we will see you this summer? I hope so. I'm begging to get back in there, man. I, dude, since December, Ariel, you don't know how motivated I've been, how hungry I've been, how how much I want to right every wrong, how much how how much the fire is burning inside my soul to come back and rewrite the ship and rewrite history. So I'm ready to go. Uh, you know, I hope the UFC will, will give me a worthy fight. You know, they, they know I'm not I'm not wasting my time with jobbers and bums, dude. I, I came here to fight the best, and I am the best in the world. So so let me fight accordingly. And and how is your relationship with the UFC these days? Like the notion that you're in timeout because things were a little rocky leading up to your title fight, is, is that accurate, or do you feel like you guys are in a better place? I feel like we're in a better place. You know, I'm definitely not in timeout, man. I've been doing whatever I want to do. I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm my own boss. No one tells me what to do, when to do it. I do it when I want to do it. So, you know, I definitely haven't been in time. I've been making a ton of money. I've been busy, man. I've been working hard, training every single day. I haven't taken no days off, Ariel. And, 
you know, besides that, doing sponsors, you know, I got Bang Energy on board, man. They've been a great sponsor to me. You know, I got uh, my bookie, you know, my, my, uh, uh, the bookie company that sponsors me, they're helping me out, supplement some income in between fights. So I can keep preparing and stay ready for last minute opportunities, you know? So if anything comes up last minute, you, your boy's ready, man. I'm ready on a week. So if, if something happens this weekend and Tyquo Woodley, you know, stubs a toe and, and needs an opponent, I'll be there. Uh, finally, what, what's going on between you and Drew McIntyre? What, what's happening here? Is this a work or is this a shoot? Be honest with us. Ariel, I, I'm always honest with you. I promise you I'm always 100% honest with you. There's no CNN fake news going on. Drew McIntyre is going to get his ass whooped so bad. I can't <laughs> tell you what I'm going to do to Ariel. Ariel because well, what's the beef is, here? Dude, what the beef is, is I go, I go over there and express my interest that, hey, I want to go, I want to go wrestle in the WWE. You know, I want to wrestle the best wrestler in the company, Drew McIntyre, this, this big Scottish Sasquatch, you know, he's right. just beat Brock Lesnar. He's got all the hype. He's, he's this big bad boy. And he comes at me from this angle. Yo, let's fight. I'm like, what? You want to fight me? And then he's talking about, he wants to fight in a bar fight and, and this and that, he's seven foot tall. Dude, Drew McIntyre, you're seven foot tall, but when you're on your back, you're not going to be seven foot tall. I'm going to be slapping you up and throw a brick through your head. Wow. Okay, so you feel like he disrespected you. Oh, dude, he Ariel, Drew McIntyre did not only disrespect me, he crossed the line. If I oh. see that guy, and, and let's be honest, we're in quarantine, so it's kind of hard to find people. Like, normally I can find people. Everybody knows that, Ariel. When I wanted to find Dana White, I went and found him. I went to the blackjack table at the Palms, and I confronted him about losing my title shot. Drew McIntyre, he's lucky it's quarantine right now. It's hard to find people. I don't know where anybody's going to be. I don't know what's going on in the world because the world's not right. But I promise you, when things get back to normal era, I'm going to go find Drew McIntyre. I'm going to hunt him down, and I'm going to take his soul out of his body. All right. So in conclusion, Colby Covington is, is no longer affiliated with American Top Team. Um, whether you were asked to leave or left on your own, we have to ask Dan Lambert that question, although I feel like you kind of gave us a hint that maybe it was sort of like a mutual decision. Would that be fair to categorize it that way? Yeah, that, that'd be very fair, Ariel. Okay. Uh, you're at peace. No hard feelings with Dan, but you feel like now uh, the shackles are off, so to speak. You can say what you want. You can speak your mind, and uh, you're out for revenge. No one's safe. Colby Covington 2.0, here we come. Good summary? I couldn't have put it any better myself, Ariel. <laughs> you, need, you need to write a book, brother. <laughs> Colby, I appreciate it, man. Anything else you want to get off your uh, your chest, or did we cover it all today? I think we covered it all, you know. I mean, you can tell us where you're training, who your coaching staff is, but. That, that'll come out soon, Ariel, I promise you. But we got to be patient. One thing at a time, one step right. at a time. Uh, people we know, names we know, coaches we know. Uh, we'll just have to find out, baby. I got connections. <laughs> I got connections. Don't, don't, don't worry about your boy. Aaron. Your boy got right. connections. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Colby, thanks as always for the time. Good luck to you. And hopefully sooner rather than later, we see you back in there. Thanks a lot, Ariel. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon, brother.